Hi there, this is Screaming and G, and welcome back to the fourth part in my Source Direct Breakdown series. Now today I've got a really wicked tutorial doing a deep dive into break programming and sequencing and I've got loads of tips and tricks to show you. What I'm really going to be doing is in the first half uh, we're going to go and recreate a Amen in the style of Secret Liaison uh, in that kind of rolling atmospheric jungle style. And then in the second half I'm going to be showing a whole bunch of drum funk tips and tricks and kind of looking at some of the other tracks that Source Direct have done and just kind of doing a good old overview of all the methods that I think they're using in their drum breaks. Okay, so we're in Renoise now, and what I would usually do at this stage is show you the best practice for actually slicing up the break. But I kind of made a mistake here, and what I ended up doing was making this break at 174, warping it to 174 before I even started this project. And then I actually wanted to slow the BPM a little bit down for this kind of old school jungle style. And so the break is going too fast for my BPM. Now I could have time stretched it again or I could pitch it down even to get it to fit but what I actually chose to do was to offset some of the slice markers to get it to roll around. Anyway so what I would have done is just program a little sequence like this and then come in here and I was just messing with all these hits. So you can hear sounding really weird but if I had it right where the transient is doesn't sound as good or as rolling as it does when I start to play with these uh, markers a little bit and this is actually true for all of the hits even though you want the kick and snares generally pretty dead on the grid like I've done here you can move these markers around whilst listening to a sequence and find the best results that way or find the best grooves and I really believe that's a much more effective way of doing it than having to nudge or delay certain notes in this section. The next thing I want to talk about is how I transcribed or recreated um, an exact version of their break programming in my track. And then this is just a 16 bar section I did here. But I did this not only because I knew I was going to want to show you this, but also because I wanted to have an idea of actually how exactly how they were making or programming these drums. And so I could use that and change it and take it in my own path later. But I think it was a good foundation to start from. So if we just listen to a bit of my bit, maybe interchanging with their track now, you can hear that I've basically gone note for note and really figured out exactly what's happening in their drum break. So that was a really good experience for me and it really informed me of one core thing I think Source Direct did so well and that's really letting their breaks roll. And they actually talk about it in this Future Music Magazine article so I'll just read you a little excerpt from this now. People start to get confused and then they start to paint pretty patterns on their computers and edit screens. They then start to lose it all and then it falls to bits as it's not what it was. The drum edits might be so outrageous and so different that there'll be nothing solid to lock onto. So I'm not sure if it was actually Phil or Jim that said that, but I think what they're really getting at is that you need a core rhythm or groove that your breaks are gonna follow. And yes, the variations and the little effects and the intricacies are good to keep things interesting, but actually having a core structure that the break is following can really help make the track sound a lot more cohesive and rolling. Okay, so I've got a little excerpt from the crane, so I'll just play this for you quickly and then we can start breaking this down. Listen. Okay, so what's actually happening here? Well, we've got this repeating four bar passage. So one, two, three, four. And then in this four bar passage, the first three bars are identical for every repeat. So if I show you this quickly, just by highlighting all of these.
So even when the bass comes in there, it's still doing the exact same drum programming. And you can see just the waveforms are lining up perfectly for all these passages. Now where it gets interesting is actually in the last bar of all of these um, kind of phrases or blocks there are the variations and they're also following a bit of a, a bit of a kind of pattern and the pattern really goes it has the kind of the original one or the first time this this sequence happens has the original break and then it has a variation then the original one happens again then there's another variation which is slightly different to the previous one and then the original one comes back so if i show you these again <laughs> So you can hear they're exactly identical, but where the variations are coming are in these uh, middle sections. So this would be the end of an eight bar section. There are these variations. So I think this is a really common structure for drum and bass and it's just a good thing to see visually here where you're, you've got these repeating elements for the ears to lock onto but then you're making them interesting with these variations and the main variations are really falling at the end of the 8 bars. So this is the end of an 8 bar, this is the end of another 8 bar. And so you can see that way the, the kind of structure that Source Direct are following. So I've also gone and done the same thing for secret liaisons because I think it's really useful to have a few examples when we're, when we're doing this kind of work. And we've got something similar happening here, but it's actually a little bit different in the structure. So the first thing to note is we're actually working at an eight bar loop now, whereas um, the crane was actually in a four bar repeating structure. This is in an eight bar repeating structure. And if you're looking at this, what we've got is a very similar thing where the first part, so this is the first four bars, is always exactly the same in terms of the drums here. So we've got that repeating uh, drum groove there. And then we have this kind of little section here where there's a little bit of repetition happening. So we've got these two B's that are the same and these two A parts are the same, but then actually the last part, so the last three and a half bars of all of these sections, they really go to town and kind of just do some lots of variations and lots of different kind of programming in each one. So what's happening here is actually really interesting and what we've got is the first four bars of every eight bar passage are repeating identically. We then got these little half bar passages which are following this sort of A, B structure um, and actually looping around every 16 bars but they're doing this alternate A, B structure and then the last three and a half bars we've just got variations and they're not really, there's no real repetition at all. So they're really striking a good balance between variations and repetition and so I think it's interesting to see it all laid out in this way. Okay, so we're back in Renoise now, and what I've done is just gone and copied that transcribed passage to the bottom of my track, and we can just go through this bit by bit. So we know each one of these blocks is a four bar block, so we know this block and this block are gonna be exactly identical because they're repeating in this eight bar kind of uh, figure. So if we actually just come to the second part, so this would be, if I go back to logic, this would be this part here is what we're working on now. And so we have this, this little figure here, and then it's almost from this point onwards, we're free to just program as we like. So let's just put in some more variations and just change things up a little bit. Maybe this one. Maybe I'll go for a snare earlier and then a shuffle after that. That could be cool with like a shuffle and then another shuffle. a kick that's a shuffle there maybe I do the same maybe I put this shuffling first 
and then like a little double hit maybe. Not that one there. So I focus a lot on the kick and snares is that the core things are moving around. Dun, dun, dun. And maybe like a triple shuffle. That's kind of cool, isn't it? I want it to go dung and then like a shuffle. Maybe I'm waiting one more on that shuffle again, on that snare even. I've got some shuffly stuff happening here, I can change this around. Maybe I'll just go and another trick I like to do is actually just sec to pass it, select a little sequence and just pitch it up one and just see what happens. That was kind of cool. That's kind of cool there. Okay, let's have a little compare of this one with the one before, because you can never really hear it unless you hear the whole eight bar section together. So it's rolling around fine there, and if I did a little bit more work to it with a few more tweaks, I think it would be really roll around really well. And so that's basically was my whole workflow for this track was really focusing on these second kind of parts of every four bar, making lots of variations there. And you can hear the way it repeats. If I play this whole eight bar, even though I've messed up and completely changed this pattern now, because of the structure that it's followed and because I've kind of stayed in that structure, it's still gonna sound good and nice and cohesive. With these rolling style Amen tracks like Secret Liaisons, there's not actually too much going on in terms of percussion layering or break swapping or crazy effects. It's really just about getting a rolling groove. So a lot of it in the programming um, and sequencing like I just showed you there and following stru like the structure and also in getting a good tone out of your Amen and all the processing stuff I showed you in the last few videos. But one thing I do want to go over is just send effects and you know, often indoors, it's really easy to chuck all your effects on the tracks, but actually more common or, or more accurate way to do it, how they would do it back in the day is to use send effects like you would do if you were using an analog mixer. And so this is really easy to set up in Renoise. And what I've just done is I've got a one going to a delay. I've actually got two different delay um, effects on my sends. And if I go to my sends, I've just got this. This is on a, a dotted eighth note delay and this one is on a triplet quarter note. So I've gone for slightly off time delays there, which I think is also quite true to the style. So it's really easy to do these in Renoise. And all I'm doing is actually just holding right click on this delay send. And I've got keep source on as well. And so I'm going from nothing and then I'm going down a step and just putting this on to send the delay off. And that's all I've done there. But what I've also done is just combine it. If I come here, you can see I combine it with this um, LXX command, which is like the volume command. And so I'm going from full volume on the track and then I'm actually pulling the volume down as well because I might want to um, use some of this MIDI. When I duplicate this out later, I might want to take this effect off or change it. So I, I like to keep the MIDI sometimes. So I'm keeping the MIDI, but I can just stop this track triggering by, by using L00. And then the, what I'm doing at the end is I'm actually bringing, or I'm actually doing this, or the first start of the new bar 
I'm then bringing this effect back off. So you can see this effect is going completely off and then I'm bringing the volume back to zero as well. I can tell you what I was also doing with this effect was actually just selecting. So I've done exactly the same thing here with this effect, but I've been selecting these two lines and I was playing with like moving them around their position and seeing what that's going to throw into the delay. So if I just show you now. So that's doing one thing there, whereas if I go here, that's doing something different. Um, and so you can really play with, with where you've got this delay happening. As well as, of course, by playing with different um, bits of MIDI and changing this stuff all around. So that's a bit weird. Maybe it wants to be... And so you can really mess with all these things and just nudge things around until you get the delays happening the way you want them. One other thing that Source Direct do really well is to camouflage some of this pattern looping that's inherent with working in a modern door. Just by the way we're looping up these blocks and we're programming in this way, it's very easy, easy to have this very audible um, looping where everything, these repeating structures. And some of that's to do with the way they were doing the structure of their drum breaks, which I showed you earlier, and the arrangement of them. And some of it's actually to do about throwing the meter off the brakes. And they don't really do it in secret liaisons, but they do do it in a lot of their other tracks. And what I mean by this is in drum and bass, you're almost always going to start with a kick on the downbeat, so a kick on the one. So if I just show you here, I've got a kick. So I've got kicks starting every four bars. I've got a kick kind of restarting um, where this loop point's happening. But what you can do is throw that off a little bit by moving some hits around to, to throw off the meter. Anyway, the simplest way to do this is to come to a, a section in your track. And so I've come halfway down a, a passage here to the last, the last two bars of it. And what I'm actually going to do is just select all the way down and I'm going to cut that. And then I'm going to just paste it a little bit off kilter. And I can come and fill this gap in maybe with some shuffles or another snare, maybe a shuffle and a snare. And so I've just thrown off whatever was happening with that structure there, that, that passage. you can hear even there just by moving that whole thing around and disturbing the way the structure of it is camouflaged the way it's looping around a little bit but what you can do is to throw off this kick as well and not have it start on a kick the, the next four bar And just by changing the first downbeat of a four bar passage to not be a kick and also by kind of copying and pasting patterns and nudging things around in that way, you can really throw off where this loop point is. And it's also a really good way to just create interesting um, versions of the patterns you already have.